So there's something I've been seeing a lot of you get stuck in, which is what I've been calling the non-duality halfway point. It's the point at which you say, okay, I can see the me is an illusion. There is just what's appearing. Call it what's appearing. Consciousness, awareness, beingness, God nature, this. It doesn't matter. It's like, okay, now I can see that I'm not the person. I can see all of these old stories of me that used to get identified with and believed in. And you experience a great relief that there's something beyond that. A great relief of letting go of that old identity and a kind of spacious emptiness opens up. You either listen to some non-duality teachers and experience yourself as this open awareness that's beyond all stories and all form. Or you listen to so-called radical non-duality speakers and you think, there's no one here, there's just what's appearing. But then you realize you still experience uncomfortable feelings and you still have challenges in your life. And probably due to the videos you've been watching, you think about all these challenges and feelings and you think, oh well, that's all just a story. I know the me doesn't exist and it's all just an illusion. Or you think all of that trying to achieve and get things in life was fruitless seeking that I've now seen through. And you feel this post-awakening emptiness, which gets further solidified by listening to people on YouTube who claim to know about non-duality say there's no purpose to life. And then you feel apathetic, purposeless, and like life has no meaning. And so you end up bypassing thinking about all of this stuff and suppressing all of your feelings about it by thinking, well, that's all just a story. Non-duality says that's all just a story and the me doesn't exist. So what's the point of thinking about all of this? I can't do anything about it anyway. And so I'm here to tell you that's all just non-dual BS. That's all just people listening to so-called radical non-duality speakers having half awakenings and thinking they're now an expert on it all because they heard there's no one here and there's no purpose and there's no free will and jumping on YouTube to evangelize it. Or they end up in the comments section on channels like mine after watching videos like this, getting secretly triggered and scoffing at any mention of the words you or me or anything that seems to imply doership or duality because apparently that's all just an illusion and no one's here and seemingly I'm just a fool for falling for the same illusion and so are you for listening to me because they don't want to take responsibility for their life because so-called radical non-duality is a seemingly great way out of having to take any responsibility to do anything because apparently you can't do anything anyway because you don't exist and that's just an illusion. But the truth is, that isn't true non-duality. True non-duality isn't passivity. It's not you don't exist and so you can't do anything and life is pointless and purposeless and meaningless. Remember, the dictionary definition of an illusion is not that it doesn't exist. It's that it's not what it appears to be. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the strictest sense. It's that it doesn't exist in the way you thought it did. And this is the same with the person and the world and your life. There's so much BS in the non-duality scene simply denying these things by saying they don't exist. They still do, relatively, just not how you thought they did. What's revealed is that they are not the reality you thought they were. What's revealed is that there is a true reality that's deeper than them, a true reality that the person and the world doesn't depend on. What's revealed is that you are the dreamer of this whole dream. Not that the dream doesn't exist. Not that the dream is purposeless, pointless or meaningless. What's revealed is that there is a deeper reality. The dreamer. A deeper reality. This dreaming consciousness that's appearing right now. And the dream doesn't depend on it. And it can dream and imagine any dream. It can appear in an infinite variety of ways. 
But that doesn't bypass the relative importance of this dream. It doesn't bypass the doing of things. It's just the end of doing things to try and find yourself in the dream. It's the end of trying to find lasting peace, wholeness and fulfillment in the world and anywhere else apart from in your very own self, apart from in what already is. It's revealed that you already are or what already is, is peace, wholeness and fulfillment. It's revealed that on the absolute level, the level of consciousness, all of those things are completely immediate and unconditional and in fact qualities of who you already are or what already is. But that doesn't mean it won't take some time to be embodied on the level of the person or that you will feel instantly completely calm and peaceful in the body or think only peaceful loving thoughts. The revelation of this truth is completely immediate and unconditional but it takes some time for it to trickle into the body and mind. You know yourself as not being just the person. You know yourself as beyond it. But that doesn't mean you don't do anything on the level of the person. It doesn't mean that you give up and say, there's no free will and nothing matters. That's a halfway point. That's resting as emptiness, but not re-engaging with the form. That's thinking that the person is an illusion, but then using it as an excuse to not look at your repressed thoughts and feelings and not take responsibility for your life and to live passively. And there's nothing right or wrong with that. You can do that if you want. But this non-duality myth, if it's making you feel depressed, apathetic, or like you have no passion, I can tell you it doesn't have to be. And there is another way. You see, true non-duality isn't about seeing through the illusion of the person and the illusion of the world and then saying, screw it all, it's all just an illusion and all pointless and not engaging with it. It's the opposite. You still engage with the world as the person. You still do things in the world and take action to create things and make things happen. But at the same time, you know yourself as ultimately beyond it. You be in the world, but not of the world. And you experience yourself as this infinite, boundless, non-dual consciousness, which everything appears as, and allow the implications of this to filter into the body, mind, and the world. You experience that this open awareness that you are, this isness that already is, naturally accepts everything without resistance. And so you allow that revelation to filter into the body and mind with more acceptance for your feelings, allowing them to be fully felt and having more acceptance for other people. You experience that this awareness that you already are never gets disturbed by any experience and so is at peace. And so you allow more and more unnecessary conflict to fall out of your life and allow yourself to think more peaceful thoughts and gradually learn to approach relationships in a more peaceful way. You experience that what already is, is completely free and unattached. And so you feel more free to behave how you really want to with less being controlled by fear and attachment. You experience yourself not just as the person that's subject to a world, but as the consciousness that's dreaming and creating the appearance of the person and the world. And so you gradually start to recognize your power to dream something different and create something different. You see that the person is an illusion. It doesn't exist in the way that you thought it did, but it doesn't mean you stop engaging on the level of the person. In fact, it's the opposite. Now on the level of the person, you get to engage in a much freer and more truthful and more rational way that's based on a deeper, interconnected understanding of reality. You see, I'm talking about two yous here, aren't I? The absolute level and the relative level, and they're both relevant. Yes, it's like non-duality leads to a kind of emptiness. You realize everything you were holding on to, you can't hold on to. It's like 
all the old paint has washed away and there's a blank canvas. But don't just sit there staring at the blank canvas. Start painting, a new painting that's in line with this new perspective, a new painting that's in line with a deeper understanding of who you really are, or if you prefer to say, what really is. On the level of the person, you get to reinvent yourself. And that's half the fun of it. You get to play a new role. You get to act as a new character, knowing yourself as an actor, instead of believing that you're the character limited to the character's story. True non-duality isn't about saying, it's all just a story. It's, yes, it's just a story, so I'm not limited by it, and a beautiful new story can be written. True non-duality isn't about saying, there's no meaning and purpose. It's, yes, the absolute reality of what is, is beyond all concepts of meaning and purpose. But that doesn't mean it's meaningless. What does that mean for how we live our lives and how we do things in the world and how we feel connected to other people? True non-duality isn't about saying it's all just a dream and so it doesn't matter. It's about recognizing, yes, it's all just a dream. And so how does that change what I do in the dream? And how do I imagine a dream that's more beautiful and more harmonious? For one-on-one -on -one coaching inquiries, go to speaktoalex.com. See you in the next video. Peace.